Hey everyone, this is Mr. Quibbs. How's it going? Um, we're waiting for a couple more people to come in before we start off. I see Nightman is here, Andre is here. Yeah, hi everyone. Me and Pavel will be from my phone together. Yeah, I don't know why, but it doesn't work for me, that X thing, and Twitter think it never works. So yeah, we're going to be on the same phone. Nice. Well, GM everybody, we got Andre and Pavo on Zoid's Birds account, and then we got Mr. Quibbs here on the main account, and we're excited to talk about Zarkonum and our successful hard fork. Uh, Zarkonum hard fork number four has successfully happened. It happened at block 255-5000, and um, it's the biggest significant update to Xano in the history of the project. So we're going to talk more about what that means, what the, um, the new features are, and what we have excited, what we're excited about on the horizon. So first, the hard fork, if you guys are new, this is the world's first proof of stake scheme with hidden amounts. So it allows you to stake and not have all of that information about the, the amounts out there in the public. It's the first ever secure private blockchain consensus scheme. Um, with untraceability and hidden amounts. So do you want to talk a little bit more about what that means and how, how this is important for the space, Andre or Pavel? Well, it's sort of obvious why is it important because uh, up until now, there was never a way to stake anonymously. And uh, we do believe that um, it's a... It's an essential thing for a cryptocurrency to be fungible. And until now, it just never worked. And we are aiming to fix that. Great, yeah. So it's something that we've always looked forward to. And finally, Xano has been able to achieve it. And this hard fork is the first time it's actually been updated live out there uh, working, which is awesome. Yeah, that was actually like... That was actually quite a trick to do the live update because we tried to have a backwards compatibility with the previous history and all the wallets and that added a lot of stress on our part. But I think it was, well, it went relatively smooth. We still had a couple of hiccups, but yeah, the chain is fine and it's chugging along so we wouldn't be happier. Yeah, it's really nice. And so Xano transformed from being the single currency to now being able to host countless fungible digital currencies on the platform. And this brings us into confidential assets and uh, the first token standard that kind of has these, these secure features on there. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about confidential assets and what that offers uh, to the space? Well, I think it was established by now that People don't really use cryptocurrency as cash and they prefer to have their own assets, uh, stable coins and whatever, whatever assets they need for their own needs. I mean, and it was a smart contract on Ethereum before, but now it's so much more like 80% of market cap, those are just tokens. And it's clear that this technology has a lot of usage and we wanted to bring something like that into the privacy space we wanted to give people the way to create their own assets without being like hardcore c plus plus or rust developers so that's the aim and i think we are getting there yeah and these confidential assets they offer hidden addresses hidden amounts uh, ip obfuscation and it's all created by this new um, the POSP, POW system that Xano has. Yeah, it has basically all the same characteristics as native Xano coin. So whatever Xano can do, confidential assets can do as well. Yeah, and that's going to be nice. We're all excited. We've been talking about a, a an anonymous stable coin for a while. That's kind of like one of the holy grails that um, everyone has been talking about in the space for a while. So it's going to be really exciting to see who who kind of comes out with something like that that works and what other spins <clears throat> they were going to see with these confidential assets in the new protocol. And then along with this fork, we now have a deflationary mechanism. Do you want to talk a little bit more about 
how the network transaction fees are going to be burned? You mean the like the general economic idea behind that, or how exactly does it ha does it happen? Um, I guess maybe just a little bit of both, but like when where the rubber hits the road with Xano, um, I guess okay. this is a new change and kind of how significant you think this will be for the future of the uh, the protocol. Yeah, I think, I think it is very important because, as you probably know, we have a tail emission and we have the endless emission and it's there for reason because we need to have a block reward otherwise we won't have any tools to fight against flood attacks and such and a lot of people were concerned about the infinite supply they don't really account for a percentage they just see the infinity sign and and get stressed and so so we had to have something in place to fight the inflation and this is where fee burning comes in um, basically what happens is maybe Andrew can explain the technicalities of it but yeah go ahead. yeah what happens is just a fee is not uh, paid out to miners just uh, disappears it's a, I mean from technical perspective it's a simple arithmetics we just don't add it to any amounts and it just disappears burned and uh, yeah that from from um, from an uh, economical perspective, yeah, it's just create uh, some. Uh, def it may create some deflationary properties if we have uh, enough uh, tran uh, transaction flow in the network and the big enough uh, su summary cumulative. Cum um, uh, I don't know. To say it. Oh, English. <laughs> yeah, so summary summary fee, but uh, I can tease you a little bit with uh, something else. So uh, we are we are already working on uh, on the next hard fork that will be happening in a few months, and we will we will significantly improve our consensus, and uh, it will make a cost of attack way way more higher. Uh, we're still doing research, and I'm uh, speaking with a um, potential reviewer of this uh, new algorithm. But this will be. Uh, more secure and uh, theoretically it will let us to make block reward even smaller if we want it if 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 all um, uh, holders agree we we'll probably put it on the board at some point with uh, gov our government system but theoretically we can even decrease uh, block reward so Zana will became easily became a deflationary uh, currency that's something that I wanted to like. Odd coins in circulation, and I think 14 million total. Um, so when you introduce this deflationary mechanism, it really starts to make it look interesting. And then, you know, when we get adoption and there's more and more apps contributing to the um, transaction volume and all that, um, it'll really start to get interesting. So no, that's very cool. Another yeah, thing yeah. What I, I would also like to add something there. Um, sure. So what Andre said with this, with this consensus upgrade, this allows us, um, in addition to that, it makes the blockchain even more secure. We could lower the emission. Uh, so that means that the daily emission um, uh, barrier is lowered so that this makes it easier for Zano to become a deflationary supply, uh, a deflationary asset, uh, because the amount of daily transactions we need uh, will be a lot lower um, uh, because for that reason. And with the introduction of confidential assets, um, if more and more confidential assets start building on top of Zano, uh, more network usage will come to our blockchain, and all these transactions will uh, transaction fees will be burned. Um, which is great. Also, for example, when you make a trade on Zano Trade or upcoming DEX that also involves a network fee will be burned. So the more that one um, becomes used, the more gets burned as well. So hopefully, when um, with all this network usage, uh, usage going up, um, we will hopefully reach the point where we uh, have a deflationary supply. Yeah, exactly. Thanks for sharing, uh, explaining that a little bit better. And the whole thing here is like the 
creating the ability to make these confidential assets is like next level. And so once we get kind of this technology to catch on and people to realize that, you know, the technology, the privacy is as good as it is at Monero, um, then we're going to start to really create that flywheel effect and it's going to be fun. Yeah. So let's talk about the ring size. I know it, it upgraded from 11 to 16. Um, it just means we're now on par with Monero's. Um, do you want to talk a little bit more about that? Because I know ring CT is a, a core of Xano and Monero and that's kind of your expertise, Zoidberg. You want to just briefly mention about kind of the upgrade there? Uh, it's actually Wal's expertise, not not mine. No. Uh, um, he's the one who was working on signatures. Um, yeah, we had uh, we we have fixed uh, ring signature. It's now mandatory, so all all uh, transactions are going with a uh, uh, sixteen uh, like like fifteen decoy, decoys and plus one uh, real. Uh, real input so yeah it's now all all tra all transaction goes with this uh before we had the uh, we had it optional but now it's all fixed to fixed drink size and uh, the only exception is uh, auditable wallets which is fixed to one input so without without um uh rings that's it very cool yeah, so the security is always important, and it's it's good just to make sure that we're doing everything we can to keep this at the cutting edge. Um, so that's awesome. And then also with that, with the upgrade with the Zarkonum, there is a decoy selection algorithm improvement. I don't know, that's probably going to get into the weeds, but would you like to explain a little bit more about how that's improved and what that means um, just in real world terms about the obfuscation of the transactions and kind of everything? Uh, yeah, kind of can. <laughs> uh, it's a little bit funny because um, we are also running the test network uh, in, in, uh, and uh, running some tests on it. And we, a uh, few days ago, we hit the problem uh, with this selection algorithm. Uh, we hit it in a in a test net, that me which means that uh, we we may hit it. We will hit it in the main net at some point in the, in, the, in, the, in the, like in the ten days. Uh, we would hit it, but we uh, already figured out this problem and uh, it's problem related to decoy selection algorithm actually. And uh, we already f uh, implemented fix and we right now, right in the moment, uh, like a few moments before the call, we were testing it. And uh, uh, today we will uh, announce uh, another hot fix release that will uh, fix few few things that we had before including this decoy selection algorithm. Yeah, but the, the one that we are releasing today, especially, is uh, fixing few few, uh, few things. And this will be, yeah, this, this with this one, I'm pretty much satisfied. This one would be a good fit for ZANA, for new era of ZANA. I think it's gonna be way better. I mean, do I really need to jump into technicalities or, or? No, no, we're good. Um, I just think the idea about just how how it works, if it's a pulling from a bigger pool or if it's just in general terms, kind of what the idea is. But if it's too technical, we don't need to get into how the yeah, map we, works. We, That's going to go over my head and probably most people's heads. Uh, we did. A, we just. Uh, we just uh, did a. Quite uh, research, including different deep, different data sources. We also look at uh, the way Manera did it. Uh, it's very interesting. They have a a lot of iterations of improving the coin selection algorithm. They did an amazing job on this. Uh, we also look at, into the data and uh, try to figure out what is the pattern of uh, actual uh, transaction output distribution for ZANA because it could be a little bit different from Monero. This depends from many factors, from uh, uh, from the wallet algorithms. It, it depends from the services that are running on the network. It like, depends from many factors. So we also did a kind of a data-driven research. And um, I, I, I decided to use... Uh, as a pattern, I uh, while it now uh, for uh, for uh, decoy selection algorithm as uh, you, you use 
some pattern distribution. So you basically can uh, provide the, uh, your own distribution if you believe you know the, the better how the decoy selection algorithm should uh, uh, utilize uh, decoys. You can just uh, give your distribution. It it it, it can uh, use this. So, and if in future we will see that uh, uh, the, the the patterns in the blockchain have changed somehow, we will, will be easily change this uh, distribution as a, as an option to wallet, and uh, that's it. So we would need to make another coding for that. So this is our approach, and that's uh, how we're planning to go in future. And uh, uh, we will, I will let, later make some uh, command line options for the wallet, so you can basically uh, provide your uh, distribution uh, pattern uh, made in a, in a, in a, in a, as a table, uh, as a uh, sequence of uh, uh, values. And uh, it could use this. So that's that's the general idea of uh, of this new approach. We made uh, data-driven research. We uh, recreated the, some sort of the model that represent the distribution for Zana, and then Wallet just used this uh, for generation uh, for pick, for picking up uh, decoys. Okay, <clears throat> cool. Yeah, so that's an important part of it, and uh, it does get kind of technical, but it really is at the core of this whole thing and makes it makes it strong. So if there is more information if you're looking to learn about that. We have articles up, so we'll link those in the chat down below. And then um, did you want to talk about the hard fork, if, if there's anything that people need to know um, that kind of that are urgent or anything that's happening right now in regards to the hard fork that would be helpful for people? Uh, well, as I said, we, right now we are uh, preparing uh, another hotfix release that will contain uh, quite important uh, fixes. Uh, yeah, and we would recommend everyone to update it. Um, generally speaking, uh, the hard fork uh, went well. Uh, we had a few issues. I can uh, <laughs> give a little bit of explanation if uh, anyone interested what was happening actually during the hard fork but uh, right now the network is uh, in a healthy condition uh, consensus is quite good we continue to watch the network and see we see few things that uh, we would also address in a few next days and also we found out that uh, you UI has a few issues that we will be fixing, and uh, basically that's it. But uh, yeah, the what the most uh, the the mo my most fear was like uh, we will uh, uh, screw up the consensus and the network will split in apart. And nothing of this uh, happened. We have a quite healthy network, so that's that's the best news we could have so far. Yeah, that's awesome. So like the consent, like the core network, everything's working fine. You maybe a little have a little growing pains here and there, but but everything's working and, and functioning as uh, expected, which is, which is really nice. Yeah, uh, yeah. We had. We, I can give you a little bit of history if uh, maybe um, uh, our users would be interested. Uh, so the first when we hit the block of the hard fork, uh, we figured out. Uh, that uh, we didn't update uh, Zana node utils at some part of native uh, native code base that uh, used by uh, pools mining pools, and uh, we didn't <laughs> uh, we didn't do the proper testing on the test network with a lucky pool. So we were like in the rush fixing this, and uh, lucky pool uh, was uh, uh, quite helpful. He he basically fixed it everything by himself. I was just uh, there around and uh, <laughs> was just uh, checking what's happening. And yeah, that was fixed in a, in hour, I think. Or yeah, we should it. probably explain why it was important. Uh, when we hit the hard fork date, there were no Zarkhanum outputs yet. And those are the only outputs that are eligible for staking. So we had to have a proof of work block to go first, but was unable to produce it. Yeah. That's why we urge solo miners to give it a kickstart. But uh, like you pull owner was there first. Yeah. So this was a quite stressful uh, hour or a little bit more. 
uh, but then we fixed it and then uh, we in a few hours we hit another problem um, that uh, we actually did a lot of testing before like a crazy amount of testing and I restarted the test network like uh, uh, many times but <laughs> we didn't expect that a few seconds before the hard fork someone would send the transaction and this created situation with the old transaction uh, already hit the network and uh, when the network uh, converted into hard for uh, hit the hard fork this transaction was already in the pools so and this trend and there was a lot of other transactions there and uh, the block started to producing and then this transaction uh, hit the like a block template algorithm and then we got another problem that the staking and mining also was stuck for for another hour then we fixed this uh, and then we had um, um, then we didn't have anything else that that bad that the, the network wasn't stopped again then we figured out the problem with the wallets that is not there in the mainnet and that and this problem will never be in the mainnet because we already found out so we will update our mobile wallets and uh, all services will be updated uh, in a few days, so it's not going to be a problem. Also, we figured out another problem with uh, a set operation. So um, someone was deploying a set, and then he was experimenting with uh, in emitting another coin to this set. And then we found out another problem in the wallet. It's also going to be fixed. Uh, it's already fixed, and it will be in the hot fix release today. And we also had uh, another staking problem that uh, happened on some computers, not everyone, some. And this one also fixed it. So yeah, I suggest uh, uh, to everyone to update with uh, a release that we will publish today. That's that's pretty much the story of our hard fork on the last days. That's it. Nice, so putting out some fires. Seems like it's everything under control. Got a couple hot fixes coming. Uh, nice, but yeah, it must have been pretty hectic when you flip that switch and right as you flip it, someone snuck a transaction in that just kind of threw a monkey wrench in there slightly. That's all right though. You need those growing pains, a little stress test once in a while. And then is there any specific wallet, any any guidance for users about a wallet or this or that that, that have, has any effect on this or do they need to update or any specific thing like that that's abnormal or everything is um, as expected there or nothing you didn't mention there well I, the only suggestion is to keep up to date with the hot fixes and they're not gonna affect the majority of the users but as a general practice i think it's a good idea especially now because we are seeing people doing things we cannot comprehend and we are addressing them and issue the fixes from the user side the only thing to enable staking on a post zarkanum chain was to create a new zarkanum compatible outputs and you can do it by basically transferring all your assets to another wallet but sometimes people tend to leave uh, a portion of outputs on the old wallet and this is why we are going to launch an out migrate feature in a day or two so you don't have to do it manually anymore. Just wait for another update and there will be a one-click solution for everyone. If Should anyone still have any issues with uh, transferring to the new Postar Canum outputs? Awesome. No, that's great. That makes it easy. I don't really have to think about it. Just um, hold out for that feature, that tool to come out pretty soon. Cool. And then maybe do we have any questions from the community? Any people that were... Um, anything to ask the team up here or about the hard fork <clears throat> or about just anything they want xano related let me see what we got do we have any uh discord questions or anything from the telegram community quibs let me have a look real quick um someone's asking is there a hot fix today um uh, yeah, we we actually planning to announce the hotfix today, uh, or if we we right, I think right now it's happening the, the final tests uh, by our uh, quality assurance team, um, and uh, if everything is okay, we will uh, publish this uh, hotfix release today, 
and uh, but if uh, the latest the latest will be tomorrow so just uh, keep an eye on uh, announces that's that's my advice okay cool <clears throat> And then let me let me bring up Perrin. We have a question from someone in the audience. We'll bring you up to see uh, what you have for us. Taking a risk here. Let's hope it's a legitimate question. Perrin, how are you? You're up on stage. Uh, you have a question for the team here? Param, you there? I think you're muted. You just got I don't think he's there. there. He just accepted the speaker invite. Oh, no, I accepted it. So, Okay, well, if you're there. We have another question, though, from iBlogger. Okay, let me see. Where's that? Um, I don't see that. Do you, do you want to read it out? No, he, um, he's a speaker now. He should be on stage. Uh, hey, a hey, blogger, are you there? Can you hear us? Yeah, good evening, everyone. And, um, hey, good evening. Yeah, it's my pleasure to be in this um, forum, actually. This is my first time of joining this um, space, actually. And um, I actually love what you guys are doing. But I want to ask, do you plan of... Um, having an app because when I checked, we can only use a um, desktop version. So that's my question for now. So you're asking if there will be a mobile app for, for your phone or a desktop app? I guess mobile app, right? Well, um, I can answer that question. Um, there are, already is both a mobile and a desktop wallet that you can download from zano.org slash downloads. Um, you can get the mobile wallet from the Play Store and the App Store. Um, so yeah, that hope that answer your, answers your question. Um, okay. Uh, does anyone else have, um, yeah, you're I welcome. Guess, uh, does anyone else have hard fork related questions? I got a small thing to follow up on that because uh, we are releasing a new updated mobile wallet in the next few days with the confidential asset support. The old one doesn't have oh, the yeah. capability. So that's the important thing for to look for. And we will be also providing the APK for the Android user who doesn't want to do Google Play Store. Yeah, excellent. So that's great. So then people are able to hold their confidential assets also on the mobile wallet and not only on the desktop wallet anymore. That's great. I'm looking forward to that one. And there's a question down in the chat. Well, most by um, RC Aiko, RC AC, RC AKO. Will most cryptocurrencies be able to use bridges to Xano? So what do we think about that? Well, we are planning and collaborating with the project called Confidential Layer. And the whole idea of the project is to be able to provide two the um, two-way bridge between the Sano confidential assets and EVM compatible chairs uh, chains and edging the other chains in the future, like maybe Solana, we'll look into that. But yeah, that's definitely a plan and we are planning to address liquidity issues, bridging, and like, um, and everything, yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, and that kind of ties into some of the plans we have for the future. We haven't mentioned that yet, but there's a Xano governance system coming, there's a Xano companion, uh, a decentralized exchange, Xano trade, which will have, take advantage of those ionic swaps and allow you to transfer um, between different assets natively on, on Xano. Um, there's going to be new wallets, peer-to-peer -peer trading, things like that. So um, I'd imagine when we get the decks up and when there's more <clears throat> functionality there, there will be a lot more um, more different currencies that you'll be able to bridge and transfer in and out of Xano. Then also launch of Xano Bazaar. Um, it's going to be cool. We have Kexploit down there listening. Um, so that's a project built on on Xano, taking advantage of some of the cool features. 
Um, so there's a lot of cool things coming in the, in the future here. And we're going to try to have these tools there so people will be able to you know, operate from their other cryptocurrencies, get in the ecosystem, transact on some of these cool things, uh, all safely and securely. Yeah, I, I'd also like to add there that um, there is a guide coming very soon about how to create your own confidential assets. Um, there's already a small guide in the documentation currently that you can use. Um, however, in addition to that, we are also publishing a video about how to create a confidential asset, um, as you still have to do that via the command line interface wallet at the moment. Um, however, I do know that Caxploit, uh, the guy from the Zano Bazaar, is also working on a uh, confidential asset creation and managing tool so that basically you have an interface to um, basically set the param uh, parameters about uh, uh, for the confidential assets that you want to create, which should make it even easier for you to launch your own confidential asset. Um, so yeah, that one's coming up pretty soon. Just wanted to let you guys know. That's exciting. Those, those are kind of popping up for, for random projects. I've seen them more and more on some of these new chains and the new L2s like base and, and whatnot. Um, that allow you to spend a lot of these are focused on meme coins um, but yeah it allows you to kind of spin up get investors launch an lp in a, in a safe way and those tools have enabled the adoption and they've brought so many people over because it just allows people to you know try something new um so yeah i think those tools are really awesome and are really going to open this whole ecosystem up in the next few months yeah, yeah, definitely. We got to make it as easy and as straightforward as, uh, as possible for people to create their own confidential assets. So that's exactly what we'll do. And then Cake Wallet integration. There's going to be, you know, integrations from really nice wallets that we all trust that will support these these confidential assets. Um, so you're going to have the tools you trust. You're going to have an easy way to make them. And hopefully, we're going to, you know, see some really fun fun things and cool projects and cool people get involved. Um, we also have some cool an announcement at the end of the project or at the end of the space. That's also interesting from um, one of our friends here. So we have a lot of cool things we're working on and we're excited to, to share with everybody. Let's see. I think we do have one more. Oh, yeah. We have a gone bat. You're up here. Hey there. What's going on? Uh I just wanted to follow up on the bridge question. So, um, I was wondering about a Monero bridge to, to Sano. Uh, so I'm, uh, Mr. Quips uh, said that that's coming later. So I was wondering if you guys are waiting for the Monero Seraphis fork to uh, to implement the bridge because I know that Monero has very limited pro programmability. So is that an issue or is it coming soon? Yeah, thanks. Uh, we would definitely welcome, uh, especially Monero and other projects, privacy projects. That's the basically idea um, uh, behind the confidential layer. I think it's also uh, would be great to connect uh, the privacy project. Um, there is a technical limitation to exist right now because of the nature of the uh, of the confidential layer as a. Because we we're trying to build uh, with this project, uh, trying to build um, decentralized and non-custodial solution, which means that uh, we don't want to to have an entity that will actually custody the the uh, the funds. So techn from technology perspective, uh, this this whole project is a. Uh, do something like a shared custody. It's going to be the signature will, which will be created together by a group of people. And uh, there is there, there would no private key exist itself. Nobody know it. So there is the only group. It's kind of, kind of multi-signature, but uh, based on a different mass, on a different, um, different technology. And uh, in Zana, we created this, uh, this thing in, a, in, in, in confidential assets that, that um, the key that control asset emission is uh, created the way it could be uh, made with this uh, distributed signature, the signature that created by group of group of people. And uh, if other projects would uh, make something uh, similar, 
we would be happy to integrate them, them into confidential layer. But this may be a tricky because the uh, unlike unlike uh, typical projects like uh, Bitcoin or Ethereum, where the signature itself is very simple, and uh, in in the privacy projects, uh, the signature it itself more more way more sophisticated. And it's not only signature and transaction transaction privacy projects has a multiple things uh, some sort of proofs, commitments, uh, signatures combined it all together and secured all together. So um, it may be quite, quite challenging to create the scheme that could be, could fit the confidential layer. But uh, yeah, we are, we are welcome all the projects who can uh, technically uh, have this, this option, technically have this um, uh, feature that will let us to connect them to the bridge. Yeah, I think Monero is a one of the top ones too. Obviously, because of the, you know, the market share and just the, the adoption in the privacy space, it it makes sense for us to get a bridge up there. So I'd imagine there's a, it's on the roadmap and it's something that that will be done. And then let's see, Quibs, do you um, have anything you want to share with with everybody? You want to share that announcement now or wait a little while? I think we're almost near the end. Um, yeah, I see there's one more question uh, in the chat. Um, someone is asking oh, if there are plans to integrate NFTs in the Zano ecosystem. Um, now, we already have aliases, which are basically functioning as a non-fungible token already. But I think he's talking about, um, you know, images on the blockchain here. Uh, maybe the guys can comment on this. So yeah, basically what we need to do is to extend alias with the image, and that's gonna be NFTs. That's it. Uh, this one we can do, I think. I mean, it's not a technical question. It's it's a demand. If people want NFT, it's already there. You just replace the string name with the like JSON like object, and you can put the image URL there, or maybe IPFS link. So whatever. Uh, whatever users want, we can facilitate. It's it's a matter of demand, I think. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm a big NFT collector, and I think it would make sense to look into some of these. Um, I don't know if the Zeno blockchain works with inscriptions or ordinals, but we've also seen those kind of that protocol catch on on a few different chains. Um, and there seems to be demand from people that are looking for early historic technology you know people are out here just doing things so i think there is demand um so I, that's that's a, something i'm interested too in about figuring out how to get <clears throat> nfts in this anonymous environment because there could be a lot of fun things you could do with the community with these with this you know anonymous you don't know how many people is holding them there's a lot of cool things you could do so i've been looking into it too and i think um i've just been seeing a lot more out there of people experimenting with cool things on chain and they're being a some demand for people just trying to do something new. So I'd be interested to see how that develops here at Xano as well. But that's what's cool. Once we get some of these tools out, once there's more people using the chain and there's more people that have Xano in their wallet and more people are aware of it and aware of the functionality, I think naturally NFTs and, you know, some of these other things will, will come. Uh, we're just, we're just a little early, but I believe that is something that people would enjoy. Definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, that brings us to the last um, the last subject. Um, it is a bit unrelated to to the rest of this um, this Inside Design Universe episode. However, it is very exciting. Um, I want to invite Alan on stage. He is um, the product growth lead at Bitcoin.com. And he requested me um, if he could have a brief moment to uh, say something on our space. So, um, yeah, I just invited him on stage. Alan, are you there? Is he up here? 
No, I don't see him. Nope. Go. Nope. I don't. Ah, oh, there he is. There he is. Thanks. So, yeah. Hey, guys. Alan here from Bitcoin.com. Uh, first of all, I just wanted to say thank, uh, congratulations on the recent Zarkonum fork and all the progress that's been made in the past few years. Um, anonymous staking sounds really interesting, and so do privacy tokens. So I just wanted to drop in to share some exciting news, a teaser, if you will. So you may have heard that a popular wallet is exploring integrating Zeno. And if you hadn't figured it out already, that's going to be, in fact, the Bitcoin.com wallet. So for some context, we have a DEX. And as an initial integration, we're looking to add some DEX liquidity for wrapped Zano uh, with the Verse DEX. And we might also enable some farm rewards. So this is pretty big news for Zeno because we have millions of users on the wallet. And offering Xano could get it to show up on uh, ETH trending charts, such as Dex Screener, maybe DeFi Llama, et cetera. So yeah, and most of our users are generally new users. So they're really uh, curious about new projects. And introducing them to these privacy coins is uh, something that they're probably very interested in. Uh, they pretty much only hold Bitcoin, so it is quite a unique opportunity because a lot of these um, other DEXs, they kind of share the same like, cesspool of users. So it'll be a fresh batch of users who will be introduced to the project. And, and yeah, it's just a great opportunity for Xano, I think. So yeah, that's kind of what I wanted to share today. And a few of us at Bitcoin.com have been following Xano for quite some time now. And it's great to see all this traction that the projects are getting. So good job on that, guys. Well, thanks a lot. Thank you, Alan. That's, uh, awesome. that's great. That's great. Um, um, so in addition to the integration on Cake Wallet, we will now also get an integration on Bitcoin.com Wallet which I believe has um, close to a million monthly users. So um, that is really great for us. Um, you were mentioning something about the Verse Dex, which is also part of the Bitcoin.com wallet. Um, and you were saying, just making, making this clear, um, that you guys want to integrate Reptzano, which is on the Ethereum blockchain. Um, uh, in and release a pool on the uh, first decks for uh, Reptano, correct? And that will be a, so to say, temporary solution until we have a native integration, if I say that correct. Yeah, that's correct. So this is what we're looking at initially, uh, and then more details to follow on the other things. Yeah, that's that's amazing, man. That's that's great. Um, so this brings Reptano back to life. We have a um, a bridging tool also on the website where you can bridge one native Zano for one Reptano on the Ethereum chain and also back. Um, so anyone can use this tool and uh, by the looks of it, now um, with the listing on the first DEX, uh, Reptano will come back to life uh, with liquidity and um, it will also be uh, integrated and used on the bridge for um, confidential layer later on. Um, and perhaps we can even explore the uh, listing of, um, or the deployment of Reptano on multiple uh, uh, blockchains uh, next in it, or in addition to the Ethereum blockchain. I got, a, I got a tiny addition to the wrapping process, if you don't mind. You don't really need to go to the website. The way wrapping works on in Zano Wallet, you just copy and paste your Ethereum address to the destination address, as you would do with Zana, and it will perform the wrapping transaction automatically. That's that's so cool. Right, that's right. That's correct. That's, right, you that's only like need... You only need it for the uh, for the unwrapping, if I say it correctly. Now, that's so cool. Like that's such a cool thing by itself. <laughs> I love that. All right. Yeah, you can find this tool on wrapped.zano.org. 
Um, and basically everything is there, the smart contract, proof of assets, and also an app to unwrap your wrapped Zano again back to your uh, to native Zano, um, which is which is great. Um, Alan, thank you for uh, for this great announcement, and thank you for um, um, for choosing Zano. Yeah, likewise. Uh, like I mentioned, a lot of us have been following it. Uh, actually, Zoidberg, I've spoken to you a few times a couple of years ago. So yeah, it's great to see like all this growth and uh, all this innovation that's happening. So yeah, great job, guys. Uh, thank you. I, I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Yeah, so I think that's about wraps it up. Do we have any last minute topics or any um, any announcements anyone on the team would like to make? Any anything you want to talk about that we didn't cover? Well, I don't think so at the moment. For now, just uh, stay in touch and look for hot pixels. That's the most important thing we do right now. Best place to stay informed would be following the Twitter channel. Um, yeah, any of the social media, we post our releases on GitHub and then we just spread out through all the channels. Great. Cool. Mr. Quibbs, anything else? Uh, right. No, I don't think so. Um, that's about it. <laughs> Great. I think that about wraps up the show today. We could learn a lot of cool things about the upgrade, about how it's working. Make sure you keep your wallet upgraded or um, updated. Stay in touch with the social media. So if there's any hot fix that you're aware of that as soon as possible. Um, and then we have a lot of exciting things in store in the next few months. So stay tuned. We'll have more of these spaces, more talks to keep everybody informed and to share our partnerships, share the exciting news that we got uh, cooking. Yes. Thank you for your time, everyone. Thanks for attending and see you at the next uh, Inside the Zonovers episode. All right. See y'all. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Uh, see you. Bye.